Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zeta with you with Warrior Church. Church, welcome to our weekly Bible study. And I am excited about what God is doing. I got all our friends here and I got Kathy, uh, Kathy, my wife here. We've got Pastor Chris and we got Pastor uh, uh, Ryan and Pastor Mike. And then we've got Andrew too, as well. And um, a Andrew, we're all staff here. We're all uh, with Warrior Notes. And we have an exciting subject this week for you. I believe that this is going to change your life. It's, it's the title, Don't Give Up. Yeah. And this is what the Lord is saying to you this week. And I'm so excited because uh, God is excited. And, you know, when God gets excited, I get excited. And you should get excited, too. And, and this is how we wrap it up down here on this earth. We, we allow God's glory to come forth yes. through us and, mm -hmm. and watch, watch the move of, of God's spirit and the great harvest come in. People will be saved mm -hmm. in multitudes in this time that we live in. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for Warrior Church. Thank you all over the world. All of us, um, we are open to hear what you have to say by your spirit. Yes. We, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your authority, Father. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you rule and reign and that you will give us everything we need for life and godliness. Yes. And I appreciate you, Lord. We all appreciate you. Thank you for healing us, delivering us, and canceling our debts. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. Okay, so do, the message is don't give up. Now, if you would ask the spirit, okay, uh, what are you saying right now? He would say, don't give up. That's what he would say. That's the spirit. That's the spirit talking. Mm -hmm. He's coming from the other realm. So in other words, he knows what you need before you even know yourself. Okay. So here's the idea. The idea is this. God has a miracle for you and it's really close. And he's telling you to connect with him in your heart with, with, with him. And then the miracle will come forth. It's not going to come in any other order. You're going to come to the door of your miracle and you're going to connect with your Lord in your heart. Amen. You're going to connect with his word. So it's amazing that the, that the, the catalyst or the, 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 the connection now for your miracle is, is hearing a word from God, connecting with that and receiving. So it comes through from the other realm. It's a word from God. It comes into the audio realm. It comes into where you can hear it. Mm -hmm. And then you connect with God in your heart and your miracle comes forth. Okay, it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3 in the Passion Translation. Paul tells the Corinthians this. He goes, your very lives are letters of recommendation. <laughs> he said they're, that they're permanently engraved on our hearts recognized and read by everybody. Verse three says this, as a result of our ministry, you are living letters written by Christ, not with ink by, by with ink like you would see in a pen or a pencil, but by the spirit of the living God, not carved in stone tablets like the 10 commandments were, but on tablets of tender hearts. Okay. so. The Spirit is writing the Word in your heart right now. So God, God is touching you, connecting with you in your heart through the Word, and you become that living letter that walks around and testifies. Mm -hmm. So God, God's faithfulness that, that, that is, is in you, that's connected through the Word of God, it displays itself in your life. That Word connects with you. And you see things happen. Now, I'm believing for mighty miracles. I'm believing for manifestation from this word in your life. But see, there's a testimony. That testimony that God gives you is a testimony of his faithfulness, that he's not going to fail you. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed or their offspring begging for bread. Okay, now in Psalms 119.11, it says this, which Psalms 119 is, is really an amazing uh, chapter. It's so long, but it talks about God's word. It's the longest Psalm out of all of them. It's, it talks about God's word the whole way through it. So if you read through Psalms 119 um, several times, you'll see how your focus changes about the word of God. This is what he said in the New Living Translation of Psalms 119, verse 11. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Okay, so even the psalmist realized that the catalyst 
or the connection, the, 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 the way that you synchronize with heaven is in your heart by the word of God. Okay, so you, you, you hide it in your heart. When you do that, the miracle that is so close to you becomes forefront when you t connect with God through your spirit it, with that word. So I'm telling you, you're so close and don't give up because the Lord is faithful and he's coming through for you, but it's his word, it's his son, the word of God, the living word that came down from heaven, the bread that came down from heaven that you eat goes inside of you and you hide it in your heart like David or the psalmist did. And that is the connection for your miracle. It's not up here. It's not manipulating this realm or telling people your needs all the time and hoping that they can provide for you. It's <laughs> praying and allowing God to do what you do in secret. The, the, the psalmist said, I hid the word of God in my heart. And yet it displayed, the word displayed in the faithfulness of God where God rewards you openly for what you do in secret. And so um, the, 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 word, the word of God is very powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's living and active, and it divides between the soul and the spirit. It's the only thing in the Bible that can divide between the soul and the spirit. So it can divide between your mind, will, and emotions and your spirit. So the spirit of God is moving, but you might not be able to distinguish him because you need the word of God to divide and separate what's of you and what's of God. So with that being said, you know, we got a lot of pastors here at this table and we're all, we're all staff of Warrior Notes, but um, Ryan, you're, you're pastor, head pastor of, of Antioch Church and um, you know, actually the first Warrior Church really yeah. um, that we, we started um, as far as affiliation goes anyway. Um, what can you see discussing this and how they can discuss in, the, in the, the coming moments after we are done, they're going to discuss. And what are some of the things that you see with your congregation? Um, I just feel like uh, if we're going to connect with God, we should connect with the word. But why are people uh, so resistant to meditating on the word? Like your people, do they, uh, how, why is it, is it, is it because it doesn't make any sense or it's, is it too hard, too easy? Why is it so hard for Christians to sit for a couple minutes and meditate on God? Uh, two things. Number one, um, I'll just be honest with you. You were, you were standing there with me. I don't know if you remember this, but I got the, had the privilege of being with uh, Jesse Duplantis and that subject came up somehow. And he said, too many Christians are reading the Bible with their soul. And I'll never forget that as long as I live, because if I filter the whole word of God by what I think, what I feel, or my own will, I'm gonna I'm 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 gonna read it wrong. I'm gonna filter it. That's what he said. That you filter it through your soul. I'm filtering it wrong because I, you know, I've I've had a lot of loss in my life. My dad died when I was young. So if I wasn't careful back in the day. I filter God as not being a close father mm. because of what I went through. And I look at our church to answer your question in a lot of what they are having trouble discerning about God is uh, through the word is based on that didn't work. Uh, that, you know, I, I, I don't understand that because my mom died. I don't get that because I'm still sick, but that's all in the soul realm. Mm -hmm. And you're saying the word of God divides that Hebrews yeah. 11, four. And you got to get into the spirit side of things. Mm -hmm. And I got to be honest with you, um, all my life, and then you you uh, put an exclamation point on it when you said that the Lord told you, you know, uh, the word of God's like a loaf of bread. You don't always have to put the whole loaf in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that because I was one of those guys, by the way. Yeah. You know, just read the Bible uh, through in, in three months or whatever. That, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's, there, there's something about taking a verse and taking it bit by bit and just letting it, uh, flow in you and flow out of you and just let the spirit guide you that happened to me again the other day such revelation poured in me that, you know I feel like the Lord is telling me what happens is it heals your heart when you do that it heals you wow. as you read it it's uh, Psalm 119 it's life to my bones I yeah. mean all that it, it begins to do things in you not just as you meditate on it and and to be honest to answer your question uh, it's difficult because people don't really know if the if the word works for them like they hope it will, and it absolutely does. Absolutely, that's very good. My, Pastor Mike, did you have yes, anything sir. to share? Yeah, you know, I was just thinking that, um, you know, even in my early days when I was going to church, reading the word to me was religious. 
and when there's religion, there's no life, <laughs> and yeah. there's no answers, and there's no hope. Yeah. So it's it's a duty, and I think so many people get caught that the word of God to them from whatever their background is, and like what we were talking about, without a healed heart and mind and renewed mind and, and dividing between soul and spirit, you just see religion, but you don't think the Word of God will actually change you. Yeah. You don't think the Word of God will transform your problems. But when all of a sudden you begin to realize that this is not religion, this is life, this is the pure Word and, and everything that God's saying to you, you crave the Word because every time you read it, you're getting an answer. Every time you read it, it's life to you. And so it's that whole dynamic that, that this is not a religious book. This is the word of God, which is for you and will transform your life when you really begin to digest it, like you guys were saying. Oh, that's good, Pastor Mike. Pastor Chris, did you want to say something? I would just say, um, I'm one of those old school, get little note cards, you know, read, read a scripture or something, uh -huh. in a, a chapter, and I'll take a little note card and I'll, I'll write it down. And I'll chew on that all day long. I think about it, like you said, Pastor Ryan, you, you dissect it and you look at it. And then so many times, of course, Scripture apply to me, but I'll be in a gas station or something like that, and I'll meet somebody. And I'll give them that Scripture, and it's like it just connects with that person. They're like, wow, that's, it's, it's life. It's fresh bread. Um, and I used to be one of those, too, just, okay, i got to read five chapters, all this, um, and then you know, go about my day, and then I started doing little scripture cards, and I would just encourage everyone to, you know, they're cheap. You go to Walmart, buy a little stack of scripture cards, yeah. and uh, go, Psalm 118 is actually my favorite, um, and just get a little scripture and, and memorize it. And, you know, if, if you did one scripture a day, that's 365 scriptures in a year, so. Wow. Uh, but anyways, I would add that. Praise God. Kathy, did you want to sure. share, please? I'm a note card. When I was awesome. in working in the salon, I would have them in my little apron yeah. so whenever i had a break i'd have a card but the word if um what came to me to share a story was that sometimes i'll hear the lord say like i'll maybe be on social media or something i'll just hear him in my spirit what's wrong with my word and it just kind of really hurts my heart you know i just i just sometimes i just take my bible and i it's kisses awesome. because I just love my Bible, you know, right. and it's because it, the, the, the word's really a person, yeah, you yeah. know, and that it's, it's like if we think of this is because when we do get in our heads, it's like it bounces right off. Yeah. But if you think, OK, he paid a great price yeah. for this to be in my it's hand good. Good. and this uh, heaven and earth will pass away, but this will not pass away. Yeah, right. And the word is actually a person. Yeah. It's like a person. So if you just, um, like, when you're alone with the Lord and you just open it up and say, Lord, this is you. You wrote this to me. This is you talking to me. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just, I think everything everybody's saying is just helping it. It's breaking off that, you know, just doing yeah. it, and then it just bounces off your head where you're just receiving it. It says receive with meekness, the engrafted word. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. You know, receive. Yeah. We love that word, receive. It's like saying yeah. yes, it just because it makes it go in. Yeah. So you can even just, you guys out there and having the Bible studies, just say that. I receive with yes. meekness this engrafted word, mm -hmm. which it's able to save my soul. Mm -hmm. And it, it's going to like wash, and it also washes your mind. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have less and less resistance the more time you spend in the word. It's like yeah. a flashlight. It's going to go in easier and easier. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Praise, Praise God. God. That's good. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. So the word of the Lord is clear to you this week is that he's telling you not to give up. And he's telling you to connect with him, but connect with him in your spirit with the word of God. So you just need one word and it changes everything. And God, all, all, all you need is God's approval anyway. And you could have God's approval and everybody else be against you. But if, if God is for you and if he's taking a stand with you, then who can be against you? If God is going to stand for you, then you need to stand for him. Amen. That's the bottom line. So th that's the word and, and it sets you free. The word of God sets you free. It changes everything. So no matter what happens in your life, remember that some things will never change. And one of that is your loving Heavenly Father who loves you forever. It always going to love you, always going to be speaking songs of deliverance over you. According to Zephaniah 317, he's going to be singing songs of deliverance over you. I think that's in around that, that verse there, in verse 18 or whatever. He's a warrior, but he also yeah. sings songs of deliverance yeah. over you. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's one of our scriptures. Yeah, so, so be encouraged this week. And then, so before we pray for you, I do want you to discuss some of these things uh, that we've, we've all talked about. But really, I want you to focus on a couple things. And one of those is, is that 
is that because you're a letter of recommendation or you're a letter of approval displayed to everybody, then God is going to be faithful to you because he wants to display his faithfulness to everyone else. So remember that, that God is invested in you because he knows that the harvest must come in. So he's going to show himself faithful to you because he wants to broadcast. Okay. And um, I, think, I think that above anything else, anything else in your life, that you should just resolve that you're going to be faithful no matter what, because God has already re re has resolved that within him. Okay, so talk about God's faithfulness. Talk about the fact that if God is with you, you can't fail. Yeah. And it's always going to work out. He's going to work it out, but it might not be instantaneous. Okay, also discuss the fact, what we talked about, the Word of God being hidden in your heart and how that is the connection. Just picture your, like if you hook up to the internet and you see it connect and those bars go to full bars of, of signal and you're on and all of a sudden you start to go onto the internet and everything's responding. Uh, you know you got a connection, but if you're going like this and nothing's happening, you have to check your connection to make sure that you're on. And the Lord is saying, how you connect with me is by my word. So let's pray. Amen. Father, thank you for your power. Thank you for your resurrection power right now. We speak yes. a word of, of deliverance. Yes. Yes. We speak a word of healing to everyone right now. And I command everyone, everyone everywhere to, to yield to, the, to Jesus right yes. now. I, I place that command, yield. Humble yes. yourself under the <laughs> mighty hand of God. And he's going to lift you up right now. The word of God, give it yes. preeminence in your life. Give the word of God. The, the Lord himself is the word of God. Yes. Give him preeminence right yes. now. And I command every evil spirit, you must bow yes. to the name of Jesus. And by the power of the name, name and the blood of Jesus, yes. we rebuke you. We send you going. We send you traveling right now. We send you flying out of there. In Jesus' name, I thank you for healing. I thank you for delivering people of trauma. And I thank you, Father, that you are faithful and that you will cause others, others to see this, Father, through yes. us. In the name of Jesus. Yes. God bless you. This is Dr. Kevin Zeta with um, Warrior, Warrior Church uh, friends right here in, in Louisiana. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. And remember that God is using you mightily in your region, wherever you're at, that you meeting like this is causing um, those forces of, of evil to be pushed back. Mm -hmm. God bless you. We'll see you next week.